Welcome to lecture 20. Today we'll be covering the finite element and testing. Here you have the aircraft configuration. We already talked about how the different loads can be reacted by the aircraft. And we already covered that you can create a free body diagram. The benefit of free body diagram is that you can then use a free body diagram to develop the loads that should be applied to the finite element model. And so there's an advantage here for sizing by hand. Uh, for example, you can uh, apply the weights of the different air parts of the structure. You know the pressure inside the cabin, you know the lift conditions and so forth. So with that, you can then cut the aircraft, um, make cuts and then determine a free body diagram um, that includes the bending moment, the shear and even the axial force in some cases. So that will help you really determine those internal loads that can then be used for the sizing of the structure. Here's an example of the kinds of loads that need to be considered, the different weight of the components, uh, they need to be all considered, and uh, they could be applied as a distributed load. You can see here Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5. You can apply the weight of that section um, in the design, in the, in the analysis. And so then you have your finite element model. Typically a symmetric model is useful. Uh, it will encompass the worst case conditions uh, acting on the lift, the worst case condition acting on the wings and the body of the aircraft. It's gonna include the skins, stringers, frames, ribs, floor beams, load carrying doors. It's gonna have bulkheads, pressure deck, keel beam, pickle forks, wheel wells, longerons, window belt, door cutouts, seat tracks, landing gear and nacelles. And all these different components of the final model uh, need to be considered in the design. Uh, also note that in this uh, model, we have a course model. This course model is more of a, a dynamic model. Uh, and that dynamic model allows you to determine the different internal loads uh, getting reacting the external loads. And here's an example where, uh, of an exploded view of this aircraft. You can see here I have the wing, uh, the main gear uh, section, the different sections. And typically different groups will take care of different sections of the aircraft. And uh, all of them uh, will be analyzed by the different teams. Uh, the the finite element model, uh, those components will be subjected to loading environments, each of these. And you can then use those final models to then assemble the whole structure. For example, if team A developed the wing model and then team B developed the fuselage model, you could attach the wing to the center section to the fuselage uh, using special connections that allow the transfer of the loads from one uh, component to another. The benefit of this approach is that different people can work on different sections and uh, the finite element model itself is organized so that, uh, for example, the wing is from 100,000 elements to 200,000 elements and so forth. So you're gonna have sections numbered with different, within different ranges. And uh, again, the benefit is that different groups can work on these different components. And when it comes, comes to combine them, uh, you can, all, all you have to do is glue the wing to the center section to the fuselage and everything comes together very nicely. Uh, so here is an example of a final model of the escape hatch. It was it used to be very coarse mesh, but the stress group was worried about fatigue. And so you went in and actually refined the mesh in the area of concern and then ran a subscale model of this to increase confidence in that fuselage section. The fundamental model, you have the coarse mesh again, the coarse model with fine mesh. And you can see here that this mesh here has been increased, the density. Why? There was a concern in the area that they have low margins. And so here, the coarse model is increased uh, in mesh density to then provide even more confidence in the stresses being, uh, in the stresses being predicted in this area. So, uh, again, a dynamic model converted into a more finer mesh for the purposes of uh, understanding the stresses. And that, that makes sense, you know, it, basically you have a big dynamic model, you can apply the loads, get the section cuts, 
and then these cuts you can get the loads which you can then apply in a in a local section and then increase the mesh density in areas of concern a final model uh, can include a reduction of the fuselage into a center line uh, so you can see that there uh, the center line is carrying the loads uh, and here, um, this model is for flutter, for dynamics. Uh, this model here is for external loads, final elements, but you can reduce the model into simple uh, beams and these beams are carrying, include the mass, include everything else. So, so for more advanced modeling, reducing the structure can be very useful. Structural limit load factors need to be accounted for. So we discussed this already, but this, this, this limit load factors really drive the loading that needs to be applied in a test program. And you also have to show good that these structural limit load factors with a factor safety of one and a half for some cases. We already discussed the regulations. And so this is very useful because these are the loads that you want to apply to the test configuration, the loads you want to apply in the flight configuration, and then you want to make sure that whatever you test on the ground envelopes whatever you're flying. Here you have the loading conditions. Uh, as an example, you have a two and a half G balance maneuver. Uh, here N equals two and a half, the load factor. And you can see how uh, the loading is applied in this case. And this, this looks curved, but what we're trying to talk about here is, is uh, this wing bending. The air, this uh, Y axis is the air pressure. The X axis is the altitude. The air pressure at sea elevation is 14.7 PSI. The air pressure at 30,000 to 40,000 feet elevation is 5.6 PSI. And uh, in essence, uh, typically you, you will then uh, have a pressure differential say of 14.7 minus 5.6, that's 9.1. Uh, but um, that's say that that could be the cabin pressure. But in reality, uh, when you pressurize a cab and you pressurize it to an air pressure equivalent to 5,000 to 7,000 feet. So these 14.7 PSI drops to say 13 as an example. And so it will be 13 minus five, for example, uh, uh, it will give you eight. So the pressure difference is actually lower. This is the upper bound, 9.1. Um, so you wanna then apply that pressure to the cabin uh, and that pressure is then going to be multiplied by a factor of safety. The wind box analysis is going to include a number of analyses, say critical maneuver, cabin pressure, skin str stringer, buckling, wing root, wing supported by bulkheads, for example. And then you have pressure deck behind this wing center section, wing curvature loads, fuel loads with wing center section, and negative fuel tank cavity pressure, and fuel bursting pressure. So all these analyses need to be accounted for uh, in the analyses, okay? Wing curvature loads, fuel loads within the wing center section, and then you have the negative fuel tank cavity pressure and the fuel bursting pressure. So the test loads on an aircraft will include a combination of flight cases. You're gonna have lateral gust, horizontal tail elevator deflection, side slipping flight, symmetric maneuver and gust loads. And then you're gonna have ground cases like three point landing, two-point landing, abrupt ground breaking, and internal pressurization like cabin pressure. And then here you have your typical test loads. There could be a combination of all of these. For example, this is the unit load cases, only a single load. You have cabin pressure by itself, so there's no aerodynamics. Uh, 1G loading, so just the weight, lateral gust, just the vertical tail side gust, and so forth. So you have basically unit load cases that are then combined together to form new load cases. And these load cases are derived based upon what loading you, ex you expect to experience. And those loadings will be applied to the aircraft and will be evaluated. Here's an example of the wing test. And you can see here on the ground is zero, zero feet, then one G flight 12 feet, and then ultimate load 26 feet. Pretty, pretty large deformation of that wing. Here's an example of the wing test. You can see here that it is being loaded by these cells, these, these bands applied to that wing and pulling that, applying a, a, a loading that's similar to flight, the best they can. And here you can see the wing testing as well uh, with the anchors on the wing, pulling that wing up. 
Finally, more predictions and error performed to then determine how well the analysis did against test. And we already described the importance of finite elements uh, and how important it is to get the finite elements as close as the test prediction because that plays a big role in the um, verification of the design. So with that said, this concludes aerospace structures one. Uh, we'll continue our coverage in, in uh, aerospace in the next course, which is the advance of aerospace structures, advanced aerospace structures. So have a good day and thank you for listening to this course.